Hello, everybody. Welcome to the parenting conversation about the early childhood phase. My name is Amy Fulton. I'm the Early Childhood Program Director at Resurrection Leewood. I've been on staff for about 15 years uh, and I have the best job in the world. I get to work with the two, three and four year olds, write their curriculum, work with the parents, um, love working with a sage kid. It's all about excitement and wonder uh, and they're just free uh, to do anything. They love to worship, uh, they love to ask questions and that's what I love about the age. Uh, I am also a parent of two college kids, which is just hard for me to believe. It seems like just the other day, they both were three and four years old running around the church, uh, but now they are 21 and 19. Uh, so I'm also coming today uh, with a perspective looking back through a lot. I've been through a lot of these stages. Uh, so I'm gonna be bringing that perspective to us today. I also have with me today, Anne Williams, and I'm gonna go ahead and let her introduce herself. Well, Amy, you are the pro. I'm super impressed by your kids made it to college and you have lived through these stages. And then, yeah, this is your profession. So I'm anxious to learn from you today. And thank you for inviting me onto this call. Um, I am the care pastor at Resurrection Downtown. And I've been there for about six and a half years. And I was at Leewood for four before that. So i um, been at Resurrection for a little over 10 years then. And I uh, am a parent to two boys who are six and a half and four. And so we're kind of um, on, the, on the high range of this early childhood phase. So um, I'm not sure that I have any wisdom, but I'm very excited to just share some of what we think about and what we talk about in our home. So thanks for having me. Wonderful. Thank you, Anne. Anne's going to bring a great perspective of being in the trenches, just right where, where some of you parents are at right now. So uh, I'm excited to have this conversation today. Uh, kind of our hope today is to encourage you in your parenting journey. And we also hope to give you some ideas and some tools as you parent through the early childhood phase, which we know a lot happens during this phase. Um, so to start off, I would just like to define a little bit about uh, the age group group that we're going to be talking about. Uh, so we're, we're calling it early childhood, uh, but for purposes today, we're going to be talking about birth all the way through age five. Yeah, I know. Any of you who have those kids that are age four and five know there is so much that happens during that time. Uh, you start off with the babies, uh, and during that time, they depend on you for everything. Uh, all their needs to be met. You try to keep them safe. You're learning to communicate. Uh, you're pretty sleep deprived. Uh, then they move on to the ones, uh, which is the year of the first. Uh, exciting to see the first smiles and the first food that they eat and the first time they roll over and the first time they make uh, say a word. Mommy or daddy are usually the first ones, which is very exciting. And then there's the first time that they move. And that's when you quickly decide oh my goodness, what did we just do? They're on the move now. <laughs> and you learn that life gets a little more complicated uh, because you go into the twos and the twos are the years of the independence. Uh, they learn that they can do things on their own. Uh, their favorite thing to say is I can do it. And in your mind, you're like, oh no, <laughs> well, I need to keep an eye on you while you do that. And then from there, they move to the threes and fours, which is probably my, one of my favorite stages. Uh, it's a stage of imagination and of wonder. Uh, you see their minds uh, just revved up, learning and discovering so many new things. And you probably know what their favorite question is at that time. The favorite question is why? So it's no wonder you're so exhausted. Uh, there's so much going on in this early childhood phase, uh, so much change, so much development is happening. Uh, about the time that you think that you have it all figured out, something new happens <laughs> and then you're working through that phase. But it's also a very uh, exciting phase where so much ha is happening with your child. Um, so just kind of with that big summary of what we're talking about, lots of things happening. And I would love to know what is something new that you're learning as a parent during this early childhood phase? You've already touched on a little bit of it. I think one of the things that I, as I look at the whole stage from zero to five, I think adapting and being flexible were two of the things that I wrote down. Just 
knowing that maybe right when um, you've got a good routine, that routine, I think back to baby stage and I think, oh yeah, like right when you have a sleep schedule or a nap schedule, then, oh, now they're down to one nap and you have to just, okay, our whole day is on a new schedule and now we eat at this time and now we go to bed at this time. And so I think I just remember being always like, you know, nothing is really in concrete at that point, you know, just knowing that whatever is working today, I'm just going to say, I'm glad it's working today, but it, I'm going to be willing and open to adapt and be flexible with changes as they come and adjusting routines. And, um, you know, now that my kids are getting a little bit older, I, I just have found that um, I'm allowed to change my mind as a mom. And so I don't know about you all, but one of the things that I notice is like, I'll put, I'll lay down the wall. Like I'll have a rule and, you know, like etch it into a stone tablet almost in my home. It's like, you know, no eating in the living room or whatever. I don't know what, no snacks in the living room. And then, you know, two weeks later that's out of the water and I'm like, well, you know, we're having a movie night or, you know, it's just, I've learned that I can change my mind as a parent and maybe even on bigger things too. Um, I've learned something new or there's a new information or we're in a new stage or whatever the case may be, but giving myself that freedom to say, it's okay if I change my mind and my kids can handle that too. And usually I just say, mommy, change your mind. That used to be a rule. And I thought that that was what was best. And <laughs> now we're going to try something different. Um, but for me, being a little bit um, older in that early childhood, I feel like in a lot of ways, I've kind of been coming more alive in the past couple of years. And only in retrospect was I able to see that um, those baby years were really hard for me, especially when I added the second and I had, you know, uh, you know, a two year old and a baby, a two and a half year old and a baby. I feel like I was in survival mode for a lot of that. Um, and I wonder if any of the parents who are in those stages feel that way. I don't really remember like how I spent my days or what I was doing all day. I know that it's demanding. I know that there's always like another bodily function to take care of. Um, but I feel like in the past couple of years, I'm starting to think about different things and relax a little and loosen up a little and find myself a little bit more and to feel a little more free and less in that like um, survival mode kind of a stage. Um, one last thing I wanted to say is I've really um, tried to learn in this stage, what is my goal in parenting? And maybe it's not one goal, but a lot of, um, I think parenting revolves around like behavior management. And it occurred to me when I heard someone, you know, speaking the other day that, um, my goal isn't to have a well-behaved child. And so that means I need to ask myself the question, what is my goal? Is it to have, you know, a child who becomes independent and self-sufficient? Is it a child who's emotionally well-developed? Is it a child who um, is a productive citizen in the world? Is it a child who follows Jesus? Like, what is my goal with parenting? Because it isn't always, everything isn't always just about, um, pure obedience or behavior management. But I would love to hear your thoughts on that, Amy. Yeah, I love that. I love the thought of setting a, yourself a goal for every parenting stage, because what I've learned uh, after going through all of these phases uh, is to remember uh, the most important things that I remember now looking back are the fun things we did. I don't remember, uh, you know, the, the management, the, the times that they were in trouble, the times that I felt like I was a, a failure at parenting. Uh, I just remember the fun times that we had and the love that we shared. Uh, and, and each stage, the other thing I'll say is that at each stage, it is so important to just be in the moment of that stage. Uh, I remember with my first child, especially, I was always wanting to go to the next thing. You know, they're walking, okay, now we're gonna read books and now we're gonna do this. And um, after having the second child, mine were 19 months apart. I don't remember a whole lot like you were talking about. That was survival mode until they hit about three and four. Uh, and I just remember, okay, this, this is, we can do this. I wanna live in the moment with my kids, figure out what it is I'm trying to accomplish and just enjoy the moment. So that would be one thing I would encourage is that you just live in the moment and you enjoy the stage you're in because soon enough, your kids are gonna be in college like mine are. Uh, and, and you're gonna be missing those times. And you hear that it's hard to know when you're in the stage. So just enjoy the stages as you go along. Yeah. Um, so we, we have these stages they're going through. So what are the most important needs 
uh, that you can meet uh, during this early childhood stage. And I would say there's probably three big needs that most childs need uh, during the early childhood stage. And the first one is to be safe. They need to know that in your home, I am safe. Uh, I can learn things, I can discover things, and um, my family is nearby. Uh, that's really important at this stage. The other thing is quality time. Kids at this stage need quality time. In fact, a lot of times they demand quality time. Uh, and it's so hard as a parent because your mind is on, okay, I need to do the laundry. I need to do the groceries. What are we gonna have for supper? You look around the house. It's like, oh my gosh, it looks like something just exploded in my house. What have we been doing all day? So what you're thinking in your mind is so different than what those uh, young early childhood kids are thinking. They are living in the moment. They're wanting to discover everything that's around them. And so uh, I encourage you to think about having quality time with your child every day. Get down on the floor, uh, race cars with them, uh, play with the Play-Doh. This is, you have permission to color and play with Play-Doh. That's probably why I like working with this age kid. Uh, you can sing songs and they don't care how you sound. They just know that you're having fun. Um, so being safe, quality time, and the third and probably the most important uh, in every stage is to feel loved. Um, to know that somebody loves me, no matter what, if I make a mistake, uh, you know, in the good times and the bad times, I know this person's always going to love me. And so I think if you're meeting those three basic needs, you're doing a great job parenting. Um, and I'd love to hear some of your thoughts about how you show love to your kids uh, in your home. Awesome. Yeah, I think I wrote some notes down about this. One of the things that we're struggling with is my four-year-old wants perfection, especially when he, he's in a very, he's very focused on writing his name and coloring in the lines. And I don't know if other kids at age four are like this, but he's just he wants to be at the table with a pencil or, or, you know, coloring all the time, but he wants it to be perfect. And he's learning to cut with scissors, but he wants it to be perfect. So one of the things that we talk a lot about in our home is that we don't do perfect. Like we just don't do perfect. And so I try to show him when I make a mistake. And so I dropped a plate a couple nights ago and food spilled everywhere and the plate shattered, like a ceramic plate. It completely shattered on the floor. And, you know, I looked at him and he said, hey, Reed, remember, like, we don't do perfect here. Mommy messes up too. And see, and so I think not requiring perfection is really important in our household right now for this phase. It's also really important to us that um, our two children are treated differently because they're different kids. And so just not kind of making things formulaic and knowing that my six and a half year old and my four year old are built different and they have different personalities and they have different needs. And so to show love to one is totally different than to show love to another. So I have um, my older son, he needs space. And so after school, we come home, we get a snack and he goes usually to the backyard and he's just gone for 30 minutes. You can all look out the door at him or whatever, but then my four-year-old, he needs lots of touch. So he needs snuggles and hugs and he touches my cheeks and he wants to you know cuddle and he needs soft things and he wants to go get a blanket and you know and so they're just completely different and so for me I think that's one of my favorite ways that I can love them is to know what they need and who they are specifically and to meet their needs not just some blanket like oh here's how we should love it and take it or leave it um I also like to do something, and I was thinking we had a storm a few weeks ago, and I was thinking about how my mom taught me this, but my kids got nervous about the storm, and my mom always taught me, like, you can be nervous if I'm nervous, but if I'm not nervous about the storm, you have nothing to worry about, and so to kind of, like, take our cues, um, and then I have to do my work to stay not concerned about the, or, you know, okay, we're going to go to the basement. It's going to be fine. We have what we need, or whatever the thing is, but um, I, I feel like giving them that, maybe that's more safety, Amy. Me, but I feel like it's an expression of love too. Um, I also try to be really honest with him. I try to apologize when I mess up. It's really hard. Sometimes I have to wait till later if it's a bad moment. Um, but I'll say, oh, mommy lost her temper earlier, or I said some things I wish I wouldn't have said, or I didn't handle that very well, but I try to be honest with them. Um, and then I like to say things, especially like the last thing before they fall asleep or the last thing before they go to school, I like to say, I really like to be your mommy. Like, I really love being your mom. 
um, I, I love that you're my son, or I really like spending time with you. Or um, like you said, even when we have hard times, like I'm always going to love you. There's nothing that you can do uh, to change my love for you. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to share is really just listening and paying attention to them. My kids want to talk constantly. They're just constantly talking and then they talk over each other and then if Eric my husband and I are trying to talk then I mean they're constantly interrupting but we try to honor them because I know how I feel when I'm listened to and heard and when somebody pays attention to me um, I know that I feel loved and cherished in that moment and so I really try hard to like listen and pay attention when they're talking to me. Those are all awesome Anne. Uh, I love all of them. I think they're great ways that you can show love. I especially love the, the thought of being the example because during this early childhood stage, the kids are learning what about the world through you. I mean, you're building faith foundations, you're building the building blocks of their lives. And so uh, they're watching what you do. And so I think it's so important that when you do make a mistake that you're, you're honest with them, that you, you don't cover it up they're gonna that's okay I can make mistakes just like you were talking about but being that example I think is one of the biggest ways you can show love to kids at this age so that's awesome um so along with love is also having fun you know mm -hmm. you have fun with your kids uh, it's definitely showing love I don't know are there some ways at your house that you like to have fun yeah, so we're coming out of winter. So, I mean, we love outside. We prefer outside fun always. Um, so it's always hikes or bike rides or swinging on the swing set. We inherited a trampoline and I thought it would just be for the kids, but I decided, I just started jumping with them. I, you know, if they go out, then I'll spend 10 or 15 minutes while the dinner's in the oven or whatever, um, just jumping with them. And it's really fun to just be in their world and go, okay, here, like, here we go. I'm going to be a child and I don't really care what the neighbors think. Um, we we like to run we like to pretend a lot and so my four-year-old lives in a dinosaur world and so everything is dinosaurs and he's always like acting as though he's a, a, some kind of dinosaur if not maybe a rhino um but it's always one of those things and so for me like I can just play with my kids instantly when it's like oh, you know, if, even if we have a task to do, even if it's like folding laundry together or um, brushing our teeth or something like that that we have to do, it's like, oh, you know, let me see your T-Rex walk, you know, into the bathroom and how can we brush teeth like a T-Rex does and show me your big things or, you know, something like that. It's kind of entering their world of imagination or or pretending and um, just going there with them. <laughs> and um, I try to put my phone somewhere else or just, you know, say, even if it's just 10 minutes of, like you said, sitting down on the floor and being in whatever world they're in. Um, and then we've been doing tons of board games. We love board games. So we're trying to learn how to lose well, which is hard in our house. We're a little bit competitive. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough lesson at any age. So I love but I will tell you, being fun having fun is hard for me. I'm not naturally a fun person. And so I almost have to like, put it on a to-do list or something, <laughs> you know, I have to like somehow make it like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to play today or I'm going to do something silly. Oh, dance parties. We do a lot of dance parties too, but that's helped me if I feel like, okay, I get that same reward as if I fold laundry or cook dinner as, you know, playing with my kids. I need that. I love it. And they need it too. I, I mean, they love the fun. That's the things that they're going to remember. Those fun times when you that you took to, to jump on the trampoline and pretend to uh, be a dinosaur and pretend is such a big part of this stage and age. So uh, I encourage you parents to make sure that you are having fun, even if you have to make it a checklist type of thing that you do every day. Make it a goal that every day you're going to do something fun and you're going to find common ground and you're going to find yourself having just as much fun as they are. So you schedule it on your calendar so an alert pops up, like it's a like it's a meeting or appointment. I love that. All right. I, I can see a lot of parents are going to be doing that right now. We're going to fun time. I'm going to put that on my calendar. I need that. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, let's, let's shift directions a little bit. Uh, the other thing that's really important during this stage is relationships. Uh, you know, when, when babies, one-year-old, pretty much their world revolves around uh, their parents. Uh, that is their relationship. Uh, as they become twos, they're learning a little bit about relationships. Threes and fours, they're building that even more with friends, play dates, 
Uh, some people are going to preschool. Uh, and one of the most important relationships we wanna make sure that they're having is a relationship with God. And so I get a question lots of time about how do you bring faith? How do you teach this in your home? Uh, we know it's important, but we're overwhelmed by it. Uh, sometimes I don't feel qualified to do it. Uh, and I just tried to explain that really it, it's about using faith words, you know, saying Jesus, talking about the Bible, just in, uh, talking and using those words. Uh, and then it's also about maybe having a kid's Bible in your home, or maybe it's about them catching you reading your Bible. Uh, I remember that was a big thing for me, realizing I was reading during their nap times and when they couldn't see me. And then I was like, oh my gosh, they don't even know I read this book that is so important to me. So then I started letting them know that, well, it's 10 minute devotion time for mom. I'm going to read my Bible. And before you know it, they had their Bibles too, and they were reading it also. So don't forget that they're watching everything that you do. Um, and then the other thing parents talk about is that, well, I don't, how am I going to do one more thing? I'm already overwhelmed. Uh, how am I going to add this faith training in? And what I would tell you, it's really supposed to be a part of, of the rhythm of your day. Uh, we have built-in times, the morning, mealtime, uh, when you're on the road at bedtime. Those are all perfect times to be talking about faith with your kids. Uh, it, it can be as easy as at mealtime, going around the table and talking about something that you're thankful for that day and then saying a prayer. Uh, it could be when you're in the car driving down the road and you hear a siren pass by and you're like, okay, we're going to do a siren prayer and let's say, let's say a prayer for the people that they're going to go visit. Um, it could be uh, when you're outside and, and you're at the park that you look around and it's like, oh my goodness, let's look and see how many things we can find that God made. And if you're taking everyday things that you're already doing and you're just bringing faith into the equation. So I encourage you that if you're not already doing it, that faith is one of the most important things that you can do with your kids. Uh, and I would love to hear some of the ways that you are teaching faith in your home too. Not sure I can do much better than that, Miss Amy, <laughs> but I do, uh, I do really relate to the idea of letting your kids catch you doing faith. And, and you practically told the story, but I mean, I remember as a kid, that um, every every morning when I woke up, my mom was at the kitchen table reading her devotional book. And that's how I learned that it was important. That's how she started her day. And so it, it was, I've learned that that was a value for her because she modeled it. So you've talked a lot about that. Um, I think another layer of that is if you are doing something that is an expression of your faith to connect those dots. So it might be a way that you've chosen to spend your money, or it might be, you know, a purchase that you made, or it might be, um, you know, a response you have to um, something you see in the news, you know, that drives you to service or uh, um, taking a moment to watch a sunrise or something like that. If any of that connects back to your faith with you, then say it out loud, explain it to your kids so that they know, oh, this is a part of mom and dad's everyday life. And it is what drives or helps them make decisions or guides, you know, how they live their daily life. I think that that's really important because probably you'll notice that a lot of your choices are somehow um, tied back to your faith as a Christian or wanting to follow Jesus. And so my example was, you know, my kids were asking for something at Target the other day. Well, why can't we have that? Don't we have the money for it? They're learning about money. Yes, we have the money for that, but we don't spend all of our money at Target. <laughs> Not all of it. We, because we give, we want to save some to give to the church, you know? And so to be able to kind of tie back some of those decisions or just actions that we do and help kids know that the reason why um, will help them to make those faith connections in their life. And then uh, we love the Jesus storybook Bible. So this is our favorite. I know it's backwards for you guys, but this is our favorite Bible at our, at our house. And it might be my favorite Bible of all of the ones that I own too. Um, and then, I mean, our, I'll just share with you our prayer that we open every day with. And it's usually, like you said, either on the road to where we're going or um, kind of in a transition moment, but um, it's uh, <laughs> thank you, God, for waking us up. Thank you, God, for being our God. 
thank you God for, and then we fill in the blank. So it might be mommy and daddy or aunts and uncles or cousins or church or whatever. We can say whatever we want during that time and we all kind of share. And then it's help us to feel you close all day so we can live like you want us to live. And then we say, how does God want us to live? And then we share ideas about how God might be wanting us to live that day. And then we say, amen. So um, those, that's one of, that's our, we call it our good morning prayer. So. My goodness, I love that. And I love that you're getting the kids involved uh, in, in the prayer time. So sometimes we forget as adults that, uh, and we say the prayer, not thinking to even ask them to be a part of the prayer. So I love the idea of them participating uh, and inviting them to pray. I mean, that's one of my favorite things at uh, when we, we work at church, I tell the leaders, I said, make sure you ask if any of the kids want to say the prayer first. And some of the best prayers, I can tell the families that are really working on prayers with the kids, the, the kids' prayers are just humbling. It, it's just amazing to hear what they have to say. Well, and one of the things that really surprised me is that my kids um, have the Lord's Prayer memorized, and I would have never thought, but that came from Kids Corps because they say it every, you know, every week, and so they've learned it that way. Um, but I never would have thought that they were ready to memorize the Lord's Prayer, and they don't fully understand it. But that's also really special. Yeah, they're never too long, young to use learn Scripture too. We actually um, we call it Bible words in Kids Corps because kids at this age don't really know what a, a verse is or a memory. So we call it Bible words and we always teach it with actions. Uh, so if you're needing ideas and examples, you can always watch our Kids Core videos, YouTube videos, and we have one for every month that the kids are learning and they love to do it. And we always are encouraging them to teach other kids. So uh, I have two year olds that can do uh, Bible words if you make it simple enough. Um, so there's all things that you can do. Yeah, love that. Okay, well, I could just talk on and on. This is, this is so much fun talking with you, Anne, and uh, I'm sure our parents are, are learning a lot as, as we share stories. Um, but as we wind up our time today, I don't know if there's anything else that you want to share with these parents that might encourage them on their parenting journey. I think just don't be afraid to ask for help. And I would say surround yourself with at least a couple adults that you can talk openly about parenting with, that you don't have to pretend everything's okay. <laughs> You know, and I don't know who that is in your life and it doesn't matter, um, but having those places where you can talk honestly about what's a challenge and um, what you need help with. And then for me, I uh, didn't really take much advice from anyone. I just kind of decided um, I'm going to take advice from our pediatrician and um, I chose, I, I think, two people in our life that I just said, I, I trust their judgment and I'll take their advice. But other than that, I just... Um, there's, there's so much advice. <laughs> there's so many books. Read this book and read this blog and listen to this podcast. It got really overwhelming to me and got really confusing to me. And so I just kind of narrowed it down to my sources and um, the rest is between me and God and, um, and, and my husband, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So that, um, yeah, because I just think it can get really um, overwhelming how many um, opinions there are all the time about yeah. everything. Yeah, no, I think that is great advice. And the truth is everybody's parenting journey is different. Everybody's kids are different. And I know it's so hard as parents that we fall into the comparison trap um, and we, we need to be careful with that, that um, you're doing what's best for your kids. As long as you're doing what's best for your kids and showing love for your kids, that's the best thing you can do. And I love the idea of not being overwhelmed by so much advice because you everybody, is uh, doing that, <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, they're trying to be helpful, but sometimes it does become overwhelming. So great encouragement. And I would just second that, that it's important to have your relationships, people that you can talk with that are living in the same boat that you are. I mean, coming to this parenting class, you're getting a chance to connect with other parents and hear stories. And I love that. And I would love to sit and just talk to you about some of those resources. Um, and stories that you have. Um, and I also want to point out that we're here at, at the church. We're, we're a resource too. We want to partner with you and uh, talk to you. That, that's our big job. We know that you have the biggest influence in your child's life. You spend more hours than we ever could uh, at Kids Corps, but we have a ton of resources. Uh, if you go on to our website, core.org uh, kids, uh, you'll see all different uh, things about devotionals and ideas for family experiences uh, and you can go to our YouTube channel and watch our videos for early childhood kids. 
Uh, we're even doing, right now we're doing Zoom calls with our kids. And so every Sunday morning, it's my highlight. I have pre I have 20 pre-K kids that show up and we, we talk on Zoom. It's a blast. Uh, and it's so fun because the parents are right there beside them. I'm in their homes. The, the parents are there and it's just been so really, really special. So just know that uh, we're here for you uh, in the church to partner with you, to walk alongside you. Uh, so just reach out and let us know. Uh, and the other thing that I want to, for you to remember, and it's probably the thing that has gotten me through all my parenting stages, is to remember that there's one person that loves your child more than you ever could love them, which I know is hard to imagine, but that's God. God uh, um, made your child. Uh, God loves your child, uh, and he loves you. And so God will always be there for you no matter what, uh, and will be there for your child also. So with that, um, I think one of the best things we could do to close out our time together, Anne, is to pray over uh, our parents. So I was hoping that you would pray for us. I would love to. And my prayer is going to be a reminder that God equips us. I mean, when we feel like we have no idea, when we're in uncharted territory, when we fall to our knees, you know, like, okay, God, what am I doing? Like, that's the moment the Holy Spirit enters and intercedes in a way that is, um, you know, holy and divine. And that's what makes um, parenting really special when we partner with God too. So uh, let me pray for you now. Holy and loving God, thank you for uh, calling us to parenthood. It is a calling on our lives that you have, um, you have blessed us with and you have charged us with. And Lord, I thank you for each person on on this call and that they have tuned in to learn and to grow and to be the best parent for their children that they can. And so I pray that this would have been a time of encouragement, um, a blessing. Um, maybe there would be a nugget, a new idea, a word of hope or encouragement, just to remind them that they're not alone and that they're doing the best they can and to remind them of the gift of, of raising children. God, I pray that you would pour out an abundant spirit upon each one of them, um, that they would feel you in their home in tangible ways and remarkable ways um, that are just undeniable, guiding them, leading them, filling up their cup when they feel depleted um, so that they might um, follow the way of Jesus as they live as parents. So bless them, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, well, thank you for joining us. Uh, and thank you for joining us also and sharing your stories. And um, I just want to end, I'm just going to end with one of my favorite quotes about parenting from Reggie Joyner. And it says, the greatest gift we can give our kids is the stability of knowing whatever happens, our unconditional love won't change. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'll leave you with that. Thanks so Bye. much. Bye.